Beauty International School presents. Okay, cosmetology is structure of the hair. The scientific study of the hair and disease in hair care is called trichology, which comes from the Greek words tri hairology, the study of. The hair, skin, nails, and glands is part of the integratory system. Also, we no longer need hair for warmth and protection. Hair still has an enormous impact on our psychology. A mature strand of hair is divided into two parts, the hair root and the hair shaft. The hair root is part of the hair located below the surface of the epidermis, which is the outer layer of the skin. The hair shaft is the portion of the hair that projects above the epidermis. Now, the structure of the hair root has five main structures of the hair. And the five main structures of the hair is the hair root, which includes the hair follicle, the hair bulb, the um, dermal papillae, erectopillar muscle, and the sebaceous oil glands. Now the hair follicle is the tube-like depression or pocket in the skin or scalp that contains the hair root. Hair follicles are distributed all over the body which the exception of the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. The follicle extends downward from the epidermis into the Those dermis. The inner layer of the skin where it surrounds the dermapapillae, sometimes more than one hair will grow from a single follicle. Now the hair bulk is the lowest part of the hair strand and it is the thickest and it's club shaped structure that forms the lower part of the hair root. The lower part of the hair bulb fits over and covers the dermapapula. Now the dermapapula, plural, dermapapula, is a small cone-shaped elevation located at the base of the hair follicle that fits into the hair bulb. The dermapapula contains blood and nerve supplies. Now remember the hair papilla contains blood and nerve supplies that provides the nutrients needed for the hair growth. Some people refer to the dermal papilla as the mother of the hair because it contains the blood and nerve supply that provides the nutrients needed for hair growth. Now the erectopolar muscle is the small and voluntary muscle in the base of the hair follicle. Strong emotions or cold sensation cause it to contract what makes the hair stands up straight and results in what we call goosebumps. Sebaceous glands are the oil glands in the skin that is connected to the hair follicles. The sebaceous glands secretes a fatty or an oily substance called sebum. Sebum lubricates the skin. So now we're going to go and review again and name the structures of the hair root. So the structures of the hair root, again, do you know? Can't remember off the top of my head yet. But it's but okay. Follicle, hair bulb, dermapilla, mm -hmm. erector pili, mm -hmm. and sebaceous glands. Okay, good. Now. The structure of the hair shaft has three main layers of the hair shaft. And it's the hair cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. Once again, the structure of the hair shaft has three main layers. And that's the hair 
And the hair shaft is the hair cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. Now, the hair cuticle is the outermost layer of the hair. It contains a single overlapping layer of transparent scale-like cells that look like shingles on a roof. The cuticle layer provides a barrier that protects the inner structure of the hair as it lies tightly against the cortex. It is responsible for creating the shine and the smooth, silky feel of healthy hair. To fill the cuticle, pinch a single healthy strand of hair between your thumb and your forefinger. Starting near the scalp, pull upward on the strand. The strand should feel slick and smooth. Next, hold the end of the hair strand with one hand and then pinch the strand with the thumb and forefingers of your other hand. Move your fingers down the hair shaft. In this direction, the hair feels tougher because... Let's bring two in here. Okay. This is the breakdown of the hair uh, shaft. So the hair shaft is showing you the hair cuticle. It's showing you the cortex. And then it's showing you the medulla. And it's the cross section of the hair. You are going against the natural growth of the cuticle layer. A healthy compact cuticle layer is the hair primary defense against damage. A lengthwise cross section of the hair shows that although the hair cuticle scales overlap, each individual cuticle scale is attached to the cortex. These overlapping scales make up the cuticle layer. Swelling the hair by applying substance as, such as hair color rises the cuticle layer and opens the space between the scale, which allows liquid to penetrate into the cortex. A healthy hair cuticle layer protects the hair from penetration and prevents damage to the hair fibers. Oxidation, hair colors, permanent waving solutions, and chemical hair relaxers must have an alkaline pH to penetrate the cuticle layer because a high pH swells the cuticle and causes it to lift and expose the cortex. So, for any type of chemical uh, process you have to get to the cortex and for you to get to the cortex you have to lift the cuticle of the hair mm -hmm. okay so which allows you to have any type of hair coloring Japanese straightener um, hair relaxer that is the part of the hair that um, opens up and for you to get to the cortex. Now, uh, the cortex is the middle layer of the hair. It's the fibrous protein core formed by elongated cells contain a melanin pigment. About 90% of the total weight of the hair comes from the cortex. Is that important to know? That's very important to know because that's how all your human... That's how everything takes place in the cortex. Mm. Everything oh. takes place in that cortex. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's the middle layer. Okay. So think of the, the cuticle is the outer layer. Yeah. And being that it's the outer layer of the hair. And it's like scale like yeah. shingles. And being that it's shell like skin shingles. And for it, for you to get any type of coloring, straightening, because a lot of people have to understand that there's a chemical um, chain that's taking place. Yeah. And being that it's a chemical chain taking place, this is where everything takes place in the cortex. So when you, um, in the highlight, about 90% of the total weight of the hair comes from the cortex. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the elasticity of the hair and its natural color are the results of the unique protein structures located within the cortex. The changes involve oxidation, hair coloring, wet setting, thermal styling, permanent waving, and chemical hair relax to take place within the cortex. So each time that you blow drying and you do a curl, that's the cortex. Each time that you um, bleach the hair, that's the cortex. So that's 
the mm -hmm. most important part of the hair. Now the medulla is the innermost layer of the hair and it's composed of round cells and it's quite common for very fine and naturally blonde hair to entirely lack a medulla. Generally only thick coarse hair contains a medulla. Um, all male beard hair contains a medulla. And the medulla is not involved in the salon services. So the medulla serves really no purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the, um, now when you look at this uh, picture here and in this picture and over here it shows you how in this picture it shows you how the hair cuticle layer is. And then it shows you the hair shaft with part of the hair cuticle stripped off, exposed into the cortex. Now, the chemical composition of the hair. Hair is composed of protein. So remember, hair is composed of protein that grows from cells originally and within the hair follicle. So for you to get protein from the hair, it's coming from the hair follicle. This is where the hair begins. As soon as these living cells form, they begin their journey upward through the hair follicle. They mature in a process called curvalization. As these newly formed cells mature, they fill up with the fib fibrous protein called keratin. After they have filled with keratin, the cells move upward, lose their nucleus, and die. By the time the hair shaft emerges from the scalp, the cells of the hair are completely keratinized and are no longer living. The hair shaft that emerged is non-living fiber composed of keratin, keratinized protein. Hair is approximately 90% protein. Once again, hair is approximately 90% protein. The protein is made up of long chains of amino acids, which in turn are made up of, of, of elements. So, when you look at the holes, element now the element on one side and the percentage in hair of normal hair so the hair of carbon has 51 percent carbon then you have oxygen that's 21 percent hydrogen that's six percent nitrogen that's 17 percent and sulfur that is five percent so the major elements that make up human hair are carbon oxygen hydrogen nitrogen and sulfur so that's what you, you want to hi highlight. So the major elements that make up human hair are carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur, and are often referred to as cones, elements. These five elements are also found in the skin and nails. Um, it shows the percentage of each element in the typical strand of hair. Now. Proteins are made up of long chains of amino acids, units that are joined together end to end, like top beads. The strong chemical bond that joins amino acid is peptide bonds, also known as end bonds. A long chain of amino acids linked by peptide bonds is called polypeptide chains. Polypeptide chains. And proteins are long called complex polypeptides made of amino acids. The spiral shape of the coil protein is called the helix, helix, which is created with the polypeptide chains and intertwined with each mm -hmm. other. Now, you will have side bonds of the cortex that comes part with this part. The cortex is made up of millions of poly polypeptide chains. Polypeptide chains are cross-linked like the rungs on a ladder by three different types of side bonds that link the polypeptide chains together and are responsible for extreme strength and elasticity of the human hair. They are essential to services such as wet setting, thermal styling, permanent waving, chemical hair relaxant, and the three types of side bonds are hydrogen, salt, and densified bonds. So when you look at the figure over here, based on the side bonds of the cortex, 
it shows you the polypeptide chains that intertwine in a spiral shape called helix. And over here, you have the hydrogen bonds, then you have the salt bonds, then you have the sulfur, dulcified bonds in the sulfur, and these side bonds between polypeptide chains. With water, that allows the hair to be stretched and wrapped around a roller. The hydrogen bonds reforms when the hair dries. A salt bond is also a weak physical cross link side bond between a gentic, a gentic um, polypeptide chains. Salt bonds depend on the pH, so they are easily broken by strong alkaline and acid solution. Even though they are weak bonds, there are so many of them that they account for about one third of the hair's overall strength. So you want to put that down. So, it accounts for one-third of the hair's overall strength. And the delcify bonds is a strong chemical side bond that is very different from the physical side bond of the hydrogen bond or the salt bond. The delcify bond joints the sulfur atoms of two neighboring christines, amyl acids, to create one christine. Now, when you look at the figure here, it's showing you the chemical breakdown of everything. So you have straight hair, then you have hair softened by water, and then you have hair wound on rollers, then you have hair after proper drying, then you have hair after brushing out the set, then you have straight hair again, because this is what's taking place in the same thing in the cortex. One is considered and here is the change of the cortex when you're doing a wet setting. And then this um, here is showing you the change during the permanent waving in the cortex. So in the cortex in here is straight hair, and this is what's um, taking place. Then you have hair wound on rods and softened by shampoo and a cold wave solution. Then you have hair after neutralizing. Then you have hair on rollers after proper drying. And then you have hair unwinding in here. Now you have your bond type, bond type, strength, broken by and reformed by. So you have hydrogen. And then you have the side bonds and the weak physical, water and heat, drying or cooling. Then your salt bond is your side bonds, your weak physical, changes in pH, and normalizing pH. Then you have delcify. Delcify is considered your side bonds, your strong chemical. Then you have thermo, therm, thioperms and thiorelaxa. Then you have hydroxide, hydroxide relaxer, and then extreme heat, hydrogen. Then you have uh, reformed by drying or cooling, normalizing pH, one oxidation with neutralizer, converted to lanthanol bonds, and then not reformed here, dissolved. So the cysteine joins together with two polypeptide trains, although there are far fewer delcify bonds than hydrogen or salt bonds. Delcify bonds are so much stronger that they also account for about one third of the hair's overall strength. Delcify bonds are not broken by water. They are broken by permanent waves in the chemical hair relaxer that alters the shape of the hair. Additionally, normal amounts of heat, such as heat used in conventional thermal styling, do not break dulcified bonds. The bonds can be broken by extremely heat produced by boiling water and some high um, temperature thermal styling tools, such as straightening of flat irons. Thiopermanent waves break dulcified bonds and reforms the bonds with thio neutralizer. Hydrogen chemicals, hair relaxers, break dulcified bonds and then convert them into lanthanol bonds. Lanthanol bonds. When they, when the relaxer is rinsed from the hair, dulcified bonds that are treated with hydrogen relaxers are broken permanently and can be 
never be reformed. Um, hair pigment. All natural hair color is the results of pigment located within the cortex. Melanin are the tiny grains of pigment in the cortex that give natural color to the hair. The two types of melanin are emo e melanin and vinyl melanin. E melanin provides natural dark brown to black color to hair. Biomelanin provides natural colors ranging from red and ginger to yellow and blonde tones. All natural hair color is the result of the ratio of emomelanin to phymomelanin. All natural hair color, oh, I mean, all natural hair color is the result of ratio of emomelanin to phymomelanin, along with the total number of size of pigment granules. Wave pattern. The wave pattern of hair refers to the shape of the hair strand. It is distributed as straight, wavy, curly, or extremely curly. So it shows you the breakdown of how hair um, pattern is. So you have straight, wavy, curly, and extremely curly strands. Wave patterns are the result of genetic. Although there are many exceptions as a general rule, Asian and Native American tend to have extremely straight hair. Caucasians tend to have straight, wavy, or curly hair. African Americans tend to have extremely curly hair, but straight, wavy, curly, and extremely curly hair occur in all races. Anyone of any race or mixed race can have their hair with varied degrees of curl from straight to extremely curly. The wave pattern may also vary from strand to strand on the same person's head. It is not uncommon for an individual to have different amounts of curl in the different areas of the head. Individuals with curly hair often have straight hair in the crown and tighter curl in other areas. Several theories attempt to explain the cause of natural curly hair, but there is no single definite answer that explains why some hair grows straight and other hair grows curly. The most popular theory claims that the shape of the hair cross sections determine the amount of the curl. This um, theory claims that hair with a round cross section is straight. Hair with an oval or flattened oval cross section is wavy or curly, and the hair within a flattened to flattened oval cross section is extremely curly. Another theory that attempts to explain very degrees of curl is that in curly hair, one side of the hair strand grows faster than the other side, since the side that grows faster will be slightly longer than the slower growing side. Tension within the strand causes the long side to curl around growing side growing oh, I'm sorry cause the long side to curl around the short side. Hair that grows unformally on both sides does not create tension and results in straight hair. However, this theory is still unproven. It is true that cross section of Straight hair tends to be round and curly. Hair tends to be more oval, but modern microscopes have shown that a cross section of the hair can almost any be almost any shape. So the shape of the cross section does not always relate to the amount of the curl. Now, extremely curly hair, extremely curly hair grows in long Twisted spirals. Cross sections appear fat, flattened and vary in shape and thickness along their length, compared to straight or wavy hair, which tends to pose a fairly regular and uniform diag um, di di diameter. Di 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 okay. okay. A telephone call. Call hair usually has a fine texture with many individual strands winded together to form the coil locks. Extremely curly hair often has low elasticity, breaks easily, and has a tendency to knot, especially on the end. Gentle scalp manipulations, conditioner shampoos, and detangling, rinse hair, minimize tangles. Cottage and phase is the brief transition period between the growth and the rest of phases of hair follicle. Okay, the telogen phase also known as the resting phase, 
is the final phase in the hair cycle and lasts until a fully grown hair is shred. The hair is either shred during the telogen phase or remains in place until the next antigen phase when the new hair growing in pushes it out. About 10% of scalp hair is in the telogen phase at any one time. The telogen phase lasts for approximately three to six months. As soon as the telogen phase ends, the hair returns to the antigen phase and begins the entire cycle again. On an average entire growth cycle, repeats itself once every four to five years. Now, hair growth patterns. It is important when shaping and styling hair to consider the hair's growth patterns. Hair follicles usually do not grow out of the head at a pendicle 90 degree angle or in a straight direction out from the head. When they do this growth, patterns result in hair streams, whorls, and cowlicks. Hair growth patterns will be more fully discussed later in this chapter in the hair analysis section. So have you ever ran across um, hair with cowlicks? Yeah. Yeah. It's annoying. Right. Exactly. But yeah, it's very important. So yeah. you know which way the hair naturally the hair, grows. Right, it naturally grows um, in the world. Yeah, okay. my coworker has the biggest like. Really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, the truth about hair growth. As a stylist, you may hear opinions about the hair growth from your clients or from one stylist. Here are some myths and facts about <clears throat> hair growth. Myth. Shaving, clipping, and cutting the hair on the head makes it grow back faster, darker, and coarse. Fact. Shaving or cutting the hair on the head has no effect on hair growth. When the hair is blunt cut to the same length, it grows back more evenly. Although it may seem to grow back faster, darker, or coarser, shaving or cutting hair on the head has no effect on hair growth. Myth. Scalp massage increase hair growth. Fact. Scalp massages are very stimulating to the scalp and can increase blood circulation, relax the nerves in the scalp, and tighten the scalp muscles. However, it has not been scientifically proven that any type of stimulation or scalp massage increases hair growth. Minoxidil and Phanicide are the only common treatments that have been scientifically proven to increase hair growth and are approved for that purpose by the Food and Drug Administration. Products that claim to increase hair growth are regulated as drug are not cosmetic. Myth. Gray hair is coarser and more resistant um, than pigment hair. That is true. A fact. Other than the lack of pigment, gray hair is exactly the same as pigment, pigmented hair. Although gray hair may be resistant, it is not resistant simply because it is gray. Pigment hair on the same person's head is just as resistant as the gray hair. Gray hair is simply more noticeable than pigment hair. Myth. The amount of natural curl is always determined by the racial background. Fact. Anyone, any race or mixed race can have hair from straight to extremely curly. It is, also, it is also true that with the races, individuals have hair with varied degrees of curl in different areas of the head. Myth. Hair with a round coarse section is straight. Hair with an oval coarse section is wavy. And hair with a flattened coarse section is curly. Fact. In general, Cross section of straight hair or ortho round cross sections of wavy and curly hair tend to be more oval to flatten over and cross section of extremely curly hair have a flattened cross section. However, cross section of the hair can be almost any shape and the shape of the cross section does not always relate to the amount of curl or the shape of the follicle. Now, hair loss. Under normal circumstances, 
We all lose some hair every day. Normally daily hair loss is the natural result of the antigen, catagen, intelligent phases of the hair growth cycle that we had explained earlier in this chapter. The growth cycle provides for the continuous growth, fall, and replacement of individual hair strands. A hair that is shred in the intelligent phase is replaced by a new hair in the same follicle in the next antigen phase. The natural shredding of hair accounts for normal daily hair loss. Also, estimates of the rare of hair loss have been quoted at 100 to 150 hairs per day. Recent measurements indicate that the average rate of hair loss is closer to 35 to 40 hairs per day. So this is why um, a lot of times a lot of people don't realize that I hear shit.